Yeah, I think uh, I just got done saying I think it's smart in this day and age just with the way things are, 1,600 kids in the transfer portal. I think you got to expect uh, some guys to leave. Um, we kind of did. Um, there's always going to be surprises too. And I think you have to stay light on your toes and be ready to uh, adapt and solve problems when you need to. With 1,600 kids in the portal and basically over, barely over 100 Division One schools, uh, there's a lot of kids out there looking for spots. Um, probably not enough spots for all the kids. Um, you know, we kind of were intentionally keeping a couple spots in our pocket, and um, we thought about uh, maybe doing something before this semester started and, and trying to address the issue, but I, I didn't want to make any uh, quick moves that, that might be mistakes. And I imagine there'll be more kids in the portal after junior college season and one double A season and even uh, probably more movement after spring ball. Um, also really want to really want to see what we have in the room. Uh, really been impressed with Logan since he's been here. Really been impressed with Heinrich in the short time that he's been here. So. Uh, quarterback's no different than anywhere else. We'll take a look at what we have, and uh, we got a couple spots in our pocket to see if uh, if we need to get some help anywhere. You mentioned junior college uh, football. I mean, how hard is it going to be for teams to have spots held uh, for all those junior college prospects? And and do you think there's going to be a lot of guys that emerge from the JUCO season that happens in the spring? Yeah, JUCO's been a little different too. I talked to uh, coach up at uh, Iowa Western. Um, He's a good friend of ours, and um, you know, he's talking about their rules have changes, and their their kids are going to have a chance to come back again if they need to. But uh, usually, there's a lot of junior college kids that end up uh, in really good places, and they're going to try to play games this spring. Um, and I imagine there's going to be a lot of guys there looking for spots too. So it's just a, a strange year. I feel sorry for the kids that are coming out this year. They haven't had a a normal chance to visit and do some other things, and. Um, they're going to have to adapt, and we're trying to uh, stay as light on our feet as we can with all that, too. So uh, we'll see where all that lands. Brian Christofferson. Hey, Scott. It's been a while since Nebraska landed a guy from uh, Hawaii. Uh, can you take us through the recruitment of Winden a little bit and just, uh, you know, get, kind, of, kind of getting your feet on the ground there in Hawaii and m maybe if that can lead to some other things? Yeah, a couple of things on that. I think uh, our staff's history of recruiting that state probably helps us a little bit when we go over there. Um, I've had really good luck with a couple quarterbacks from there, um, from St. Louis and Emililani. And I was over there before recruiting got shut down last winter with uh, Tony Tuyote, and he used to live on the North Shore, show me where he lived, and we drove through the neighborhood, and everybody knew who he was. And he stopped at a place that looked like a gas station to get poke tuna, and it was awesome. And some kind of breakfast pastry that I didn't even uh, know the name of that was unbelievable. And I think we ate two dozen between the two of us. And I jumped off a cliff into the ocean and um, everybody knows him over there. So he's, uh, I think he's going to be a big asset for us over there. Um, really unusual to recruit somebody from there without really having a chance to, to get over there. But uh, we were lucky enough to see Wyndon, um on that trip when we were over and, and stayed in touch with him. Tony did a good job. Uh, Barrett and Doss and Chins all did a good job with him. And he's our kind of guy. So um, we don't care where they're from. Uh, only disappointment is I didn't get to go over and do a home visit with him. But uh, he, he's a good, a good player, and, and hopefully that opens the door for us. It's got a current guy everybody's wondered about is Omar Manning, and he's, he's, he's stuck around. Where's he at now? How do you feel about him going in the spring and if he can be ready for you? You know, we're, we're trying to get Omar healthy and, and ready to go. Um, he's here and, and it's done a good job so far. Um, so we got our fingers crossed, and, and we're trying to help him out any way we can. But uh, also, you know, I just don't want to put too much pressure on him. I think uh, we're all expecting him to be a good player. Um, but uh, I, I don't want him to feel overwhelmed with the pressure of that. And um, we're excited about what he can, we can he can do for us if uh, if we get him right and he's a, a consistent part of the team. Parker Gabriel, <clears throat> Scott. I know it wasn't a normal year for anybody, but how much were you able to learn about Logan Smothers over the course of the year? Obviously, 
once the season arrived, you're getting your, your two main quarterbacks ready to play. So what did you learn about him? Sort of where is he at in his developmental arc and what's the challenge for him uh, this winter and spring? Yeah, I'm excited by what I've seen so far. Um, Logan's as good an athlete as, as all those other guys in, in the quarterback room. Um, I think what I've really been impressed with so far is just his savvy and uh, ability to process information quick and make good decisions. Uh, he's been really accurate. Mario's, Mario's been working with him on, on throwing motion to make that a little more consistent and efficient and, and powerful. And I've seen Mario do wonderful things with guys from that standpoint. Uh, so. I, I got higher hopes uh, right now than I did when we recruited Logan, and uh, he's going to get his share of reps this spring, so anxious to see where he is. Uh, Mitch Sherman. Hey, Scott. Um, sticking with the quarterback uh, discussion, if you do uh, you know, look, look for somebody uh, after the spring, does it take a unique guy in that you have a 27-game starter um, coming back, you know, how do you go about that process if you're going to, um, you know, start to look at, at possibilities and, you know, finding the right dynamic, the right fit uh, for, for the chemistry that you have right now in that room? Uh, I'm not trying to belittle the question, but I, I, that's way too far down the road for me to get into details about what we're thinking if we need one. Um, that's not what we're thinking right now. I'm anxious to go. I want to coach the kids that want to be here and the kids that are on our team, and um, we'll see what happens down the road. But I, I don't want to get into that kind of speculation. Okay. okay. Um, can I ask you one, too, just about the overall depth um, at your offensive skill spots? Um, of course, Adrian is an experienced guy, but um, you know, what's what's your mindset going into into winter, into spring, with the um, – you know, the lack of experience that you have at, at running back and receiver and the opportunity for uh, young guys to step up and emerge there? Yeah, I think it's two different questions, experience and depth. Uh, this is the best depth we've had by far um, and the best overall talent we've had by far at the skill spots, in my opinion. Um, you know, starting with tight end with the guys we have coming back, obviously there's experience and depth and talent at that position. Uh, we love our young running backs, and I think they're going to be great. We just thought uh, they were all young, and, and maybe we needed to add a veteran player. But that that room looks the best that it's looked since I've been here. Um, receiver, I think we have more talent in the room by far than we've had in a long time. Uh, adding Samori certainly helps. Um, you know, we got guys that played last year between Levi Falk and Oliver Martin and Xavier Betts and Alante Brown. Um, that all have some experience and I can expect to make a huge jump this year. Uh, some walk-ons that are really helping us and, and have a chance to be really good for us. Will Nixon coming back off injury that uh, was looking really good until he got hurt. Uh, plus the three kids that we signed that I'm really excited about. So um, as far as that room goes, I think it's far and away the deepest and most talented group that we've had. Um, Experience is an issue at some of those spots. I think that's why guys like Marquise and Samori are going to help us. They haven't done it here, but uh, it's hard to argue with the playing time at, at running back and um, being an All-American at the 1AA level, and that certainly gives some experience and uh, former production. So overall skill positions, uh, best talent that I think we've had and, and certainly the best step. Thanks. Uh, KM3, Adam Kruger. Hey, Coach, just curious if you have an update on the special teams analyst position, and is there anything specifically you're looking out of that position that maybe uh, the person who held that job last year didn't give to you or anything different you're looking from that spot this year? I figured I should ask you guys that question. You guys seem to know what's going to happen before we do around here. Um, I think we're getting really close to making some announcements. Uh, we uh, have to go through a process here and, and try to do – a good job with following the rules here to make sure that uh, that we post things and do interviews and background checks and everything before we hire people. And um, I think we've had some guys identified for a while. I think it'll be announced soon. Uh, Sam McEwen. OK. okay. Um, um, all right, I was, yeah, I, I tried to stay a little back here. Um, 
Scott, I, I guess I'm, I'm, I'm curious. I talked to you about 10 days ago. Um, you know, there's just, just what it's like now that you're the head coach of a program and responsible for a whole bunch of people and, and how you process criticism from, well, from us, I suppose, but from former teammates and knowing in your own heart that like you're responsible for a whole bunch of people now versus when you were a player, when you could control your own performance and that was about it. How, how has that changed? And, and like, how do you kind of process some of the negativity that you hear now, knowing that you're responsible for a bunch of people, including 150 players? Sam, I don't even really know where you're going with that question. Uh, I'm not going to comment on any criticism. Um, you know, sometimes I just need to call you and ask you what's going on with some of the criticism. Um, yeah. That's the nature of this job. There's going to be people that agree with everything. If you're throwing the ball, you should be running it. If you're running it, you should be throwing it. Um, that's the nature of the job. Um, sometimes it get a little personal here, especially since it's my home state. Uh, but Listen, we want every former player to be involved in this. We've called a bunch of them the last couple of weeks to make sure uh, they know that we want them around. And um, winning take care, takes care of almost all of that. So that's what we got our mind focused on. And I tell the guys not to pay any attention to the outside noise. And a lot of the articles um, are outside noise. Um, and there's criticisms that are unwarranted. Um, you know, we're looking to hire a player development guy, and somehow that got twisted into Ron Brown not being incapable or being too old. That's just dead wrong, and that was twisting words. Uh, anytime you're in front of the camera a lot, a lot of words can be twisted. Um, Ron's an unbelievably valuable part of our program. We just want to get him in the role where he can do the most good. Um, the rest of it is just noise and people in the way of us trying to accomplish what we need to accomplish. What, what when you think about Ron's strengths and the things that he he's going to help you do really well? What what strikes you about the course of his career and the value that he's brought to you personally? Uh, he's got as much character as anybody I've been around, and a ton of experience, and uh, loves this place as as much as I do. Steve Sipple. Hey Scott, a little off the beaten path. Um, Alabama has had nine of the the last 11 top ranked recruiting classes in the nation. Can you kind of put that in perspective and maybe what it means to your plight, what, what it means to everybody's plight? I'm you new to this Alabama? idea that I have a lot of plight, so you're going to have to explain to me. <laughs> I, I don't work at Alabama. I work here. We need kids that fit here, want to be here, kids that we can develop and um, – we're going to get the best we can. You, um, I, Ron did tell me you guys have watched some Alabama tape of late. What in particular impresses you about that machine right now? Um, we watch everybody sip. I mean, we go through in the off season and uh, I guarantee when in our time at Oregon and UCF and probably even here, we're one of the teams that people have probably watched a lot. Um, and you see elements of what Chip started at Oregon and what we did and, and carried on. And everybody's stealing from everybody. We're not the only one. Everybody's stealing from everybody. So, um, And usually teams are watching the most productive offenses and defenses to see if they can pick one or two things up here and there. So that's just uh, one of many that we'll watch in the offseason to see if we can pick anything up. Um, congratulations to them. The run they're on is unbelievable. And... Uh, I think they execute well. Man, did they have a lot of talent and speed and um, did a good job with that group, putting them in position to make plays. Thank you, Scott. KETV, Andy Kendi. Hey, Scott, this is a broad brush. I don't want to get in particulars uh, with certain individuals, but why do you think kids these days are more apt to look for greener grass and enter the transfer portal? Is there a unifying characteristic that you hear over and over again? No, and honestly, it's a, maybe, it's a little hypocritical of me to say anything I transferred. Um, uh, sometimes you, you pick someplace and it isn't the right fit and you need to go someplace. And I, I think every situation is unique. Um, I, I, would, I would say if you want to paint with broad brushes that we probably live in, a, in an era where adults and kids alike uh, have shorter attention spans and want 
uh, instant gratification and want everything to work right away. And um, it doesn't always work immediately. Um, and sometimes the best thing you can do is put your head down and work harder and make it work. And um, a lot of a lot of kids are doing that at every school around the country. Um, some others don't make that decision, and they have to do what's best for them. Uh, best we can do is try to adapt to all these things. Hey, that being said, uh, how 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 thrilled are you about the pieces you have coming back defensively? You got almost everyone back. Yeah. Um, and, and those are the leaders on our football team right now. Um, you know, Ben Stilley from up in Ashland, I think his best few games at Nebraska were his last few. Uh, I expect that to just keep blossoming and getting better. Um, you know, Deontay and Markell in the secondary were real leaders for us all last year. Uh, I think they both have a chance to play after college. Um, so we're thrilled to get those guys back. Uh, Will Honus had an injury his first year here and had a really good season for us last year. It's great to get him back. And uh, JoJo's, they're, they're all unique situations. I think JoJo would have had a chance to move on this year, uh, but really wanted to come back and be with that group of guys and, and see Nebraska get over the top. So um, we're thrilled to have them back. They're all the type of kids we want. Uh, it's a lot easier to win in this league with experience, and getting those guys back gives us more experience. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. Get to a few more. Uh, Brian Christofferson again. Hey, Scott, you sounded um, optimistic in one of the interviews about Miles Farmer um, maybe being on a quicker timetable and some worried about it first. Is, is he a possibility for the spring? And I was also going to ask about Javen Wright because I know he had an injury last year and where he was kind of at. Yeah, both those two kids, Miles and Javen, are are young, talented kids that we're really excited about. Um, man, uh, Javen was having an unbelievable camp until he got hurt in a drill. Um, we we really could have used him this last year. Um, Miles, that you know, that was heartbreaking to me and uh, threw us all into threw us all for a loop a little bit right before the Purdue game to to just get hurt doing a ball drill in warm ups. Um, those guys both have a chance to be good players around here and uh, just both great kids. Um, they're working hard to get back. I, I expect uh, they're both on a good track. And um, I think latest update, they'll both be at least in a limited capacity ready for spring. And I know this is far down the road, but it does deal with your offseason planning. Even if you guys don't make the trip to Dublin because of all the circumstances, would you still – want to play a week zero game is there still a benefit in that scheduling wise for you guys um we'll see I, I you know that's all stuff that we have to have determined for us um i miss traveling overseas my wife and i love to travel overseas and um i just haven't been able to uh with covid so i've never been to ireland been to a lot of other countries in europe was looking forward to it hope our program gets to do it at some point either this year or down the road if it doesn't happen this year um and i think the rest of the schedule uh, has a chance to be altered or changed based on that so uh, a lot of things still up in the air right now thank you thank you uh back to parker gabriel scott sort of a spring process question with with the way the academic calendar set up is that is it better for you in some ways to be able to run spring ball uh, without spring break being in, in the equation? And then also are the, now that you're out of season, are your COVID protocols with your team a lot different than what they were while you were going through the season? Yeah, I think the campus protocols have changed a little Parker and, and that's helped us make sure that we get the kids back and keep them healthy. Uh, we've kind of gone back to a little more of a, uh, program like we used in the off season last year before the season got started. Uh, it's costly to test kids every day. Um, we're just doing a really good job monitoring potential symptoms and health and making sure we're uh, keeping an eye on everybody's health and, and testing when appropriate. Um, spring ball thing, yeah. Uh, you know, you just have to be light on your feet uh, nowadays with this stuff going on. And I, I, I kind of pleased with how how it's all going to work out this year it gives us a chance to get spring ball done in one swing rather than having spring break in the middle of it. I think a May 1st spring game with our fingers crossed that fans can be there uh, gives us a better chance of, of having a great day for that. And 
uh, we try not to push the kids, so we go three practices a week, and, and having five straight weeks of that, I think, uh, sets up well for us to make the improvements we need. Uh, Evan Bland. Scott, I'm just curious, how much has the pandemic affected where you guys are with 2022 recruiting, and what challenges do you think will be unique to that cycle as it starts playing out? I, I just the unique thing with 22 recruits right now is uh, we got a ton of kids that are anxious to come see Lincoln and trying to figure out when that's going to happen. Um, there's talk that it'll be April 1st. There's talk it might get pushed to June 1st. Um, we do the best when, when kids have a chance to come see Lincoln and see the people of Lincoln and meet the fans and maybe even be at a home game. So um, we'll be in a better position the minute we can have unofficial and official visits and uh, doing the best we can in the meantime. We're here. Um, back to Adam Kruger. Hey, Coach, how much more of a role do you foresee yourself having with the quarterbacks in the offseason, and what all would that specifically entail? I'm always involved with the quarterbacks. Mario does a great job, has done a great job. Um, but as a head coach and, and guy working with the offense, I'm always involved with the quarterbacks and, and will be as much as I need to to – uh, to get the guys ready. Uh, Mario always has them ready. Uh, if there's anything extra that I can add to it, uh, I'm always looking for opportunities to do that. Sean Callahan. Yeah, Coach, I know there weren't a lot of positives with COVID, uh, but when you look at just what it forced you guys to do in recruiting and, and kind of honing in on the 500-mile radius, I mean, can you pull some real positives from that just – uh, how you guys were able to really succeed locally, getting so many of your guys uh, within driving distance from Lincoln? Yeah, I, I said I think that was a little bit of a an half intentional and, and half result of, of the COVID that we have more regional guys. Um, that's where we start all the time anyway, Sean. If, if there's a kid, in, in the, particularly in the state and in the area that we think can help us, um, we want them here. Um, We've done a lot of things with Zooms and virtual visits and everything that I think we probably need to continue to use when appropriate. Um, but uh, the great part about that is, is I think the talent pool in the Midwest and in Nebraska uh, looks really strong the next couple of years, and uh, we're excited to get our share of those guys. Hale Varsity, Derek Peterson. Hey, Scott, uh, depending on kind of the, the group that you go with, you could be young on the offensive line. And what do you want to see from that group as you go through winter conditioning and move into spring ball? Yeah, I'm really excited about the offensive line group. Um, you know, Jaime and uh, Matt were both a, a part of what we were doing for a long time. We're grateful to them. Uh, you know, we started that last game at, at Rutgers with four underclassmen, uh, three of them being freshmen. And I guess Cam technically still was a freshman uh, with a red shirt, and this year not counting. So um, we're going to have some. We got some really good young talent at that position. Some veterans that are going to compete for time, and I think we're getting more talented on the offensive line. Uh, made too many mistakes there last year between uh, penalties and just a missed block here or there. Um, that sometimes goes along with some inexperience. Uh, but um, and if there's one group that I think is probably going to make the biggest jump. Uh, this offseason on the offense, it's that group. And uh, Coach Austin's already working with them and, and looking forward to what they can become. You got a big, long, extended look at Bryce Benhart at right tackle. Does he kind of factor into your thinking of, of why you think they can make a step? Absolutely. Um, you're just never as good in your first year playing college football as you are your second. And um, I think Bryce knows some things he needs to work on, but – uh, for a redshirt freshman out there playing in the Big Ten, uh, he had a really good year and did a lot of good things. Um, and he's he's committed to working hard and excited about him, excited about Ethan Piper continuing to develop. You know, Turner Corcoran came in at left tackle last year, and um, we didn't miss a beat with him out there after uh, losing a senior for the last game. Uh, Brant Banks is another kid in our program that is young and really talented. I'm also really excited about guys like uh, Sickerman and Hickson and and Bando and others that uh, you know are going to get a shot to compete at all those spots. Um, you know, Nuri's a kid that came in that has a lot of talent. 
Uh, Ezra Miller we got as a transfer. Um, there's going to be some really good competition at those spots, and I think we're bigger and more athletic than we've been. All right, and we'll finish up. Kevin Suits. Scott, Super Bowl Sunday is a few days away. Uh, do you have a, a pick between the Bucks and the Chiefs, or do you have a rooting interest in the game? First of all, I got to comment on your room. Nice trash can up there. Uh, I don't know about the sticker on your whatever that is. We got it. It's a scofro over there, and yeah, the Cubs cans up there. And I won't go through all the bobbleheads that are back there either. Well, you got a. Is that a Herbie or Harry Husker? I can't tell. Um, uh, that's an old school Herbie back there. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, what was the question? Uh, <laughs> Super Bowl Sunday. Who do you got, and uh, do you have a rooting interest? Uh, man, this one's tough for me because I. You know, I, I root for the Chiefs because they're a Midwest team, and gosh, they're just fun to watch, and I love their creativity on offense. It's hard to it's hard to not root for the Buccaneers right now with all the Nebraska ties that you have there. You know, Sue has meant so much to this program uh, and has such an unbelievable career that I'm really pulling for him to, to maybe be able to put a ring on. Uh, Levante David, same way, and he's one of the best in the business and has been, and um, he deserves more accolades than he gets. And having Khalil down there, too, as somebody that I coached. Um, actually been on the phone with Jason Light, uh, who's a Nebraska guy, and congratulated him on getting where he is. And we even have a strength coach, Chad Wade, that worked here for a long time that works for the Bucks. So um, i got to be pulling for them because of Nebraska ties. But um, looking forward to watching. And good luck to those Nebraska guys for the Bucks.